I've never cared about Sonic, but the guy who animates a lot of this I really like. His name is Hisashi Iguchi. If you've ever watched Naruto, Ghost in the Shell, Lupin, Cowboy Bebop, or Evangelion, you might have seen his work. And if you're a Dragon Ball fan, you'll know him for Piccolo's Sacrifice and some of the best action animation in the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament. Anyways, let's look at this amazing opening. First off, clouds. Doesn't sound important, wasn't necessary, but animating the shadow makes the environment uh, a bit more alive. And by having such a big element in the screen, it makes Sonic feel small, which is one of the many components of why this opening is so good. The director, not a Gucci, keeps using these extreme long shots. Why? To emphasize speed through distance. If you had him running down a road, basic long shot, yeah, it'd be fine, but when you zoom right out, you can see forests, rivers, hills, more clouds. And when Sonic crosses it all in the blink of an eye, makes it clear for your big stupid brain that he's kind of fast and half that job's done with just the camera position. The other half is a Gucci. Yeah, you can be a director with a lot of cool ideas, but you need a good team under you to make the dream happen. And a Gucci makes things happen. The director seems to have this cat and mouse concept with the camera, where it's always trying to play catch up with Sonic. From the first cut, as soon as Sonic comes fully on screen, gone. Comes back, then vanishes again. And when the camera comes around, he's way out. But it's the way a Gucci maneuvers the camera around the surroundings and Sonic, which makes it really impressive and provides much more energy. The first time this aspect of his work really stuck out was in Dragon Ball episode 139, but here he takes it to another level of complexity. If you're a non-artist, you might be like, uh, what's so difficult about this? Well, with animation, you're having to keep consistency and volume between the drawings. So uh, look at Yamcha's arm. It goes from this size to this to this, to this. The volume of the arm is inconsistent and play looks jerky in motion. This also shows the importance of good in betweening work, which this opening definitely has plenty of. But when you're doing a pan up as well as zooming out, then having to draw the background at the same time, the difficulty goes way up. There's so many ways it could go wrong and would be a nightmare of a task for someone with less experience. Oop, there's the thumbnail. Gotta pretend like that has something to do with the video. Thinking of Sonic's eyes as a banana shape may be one helpful way to draw him, although honestly Aguchi's character sheets might give some better pointers, and Aguchi also shows the volume to the character's anatomy. You can see here how Aguchi treats Sonic's head as a sphere, not a circle. He's clearly thinking in three dimensions. After Toshiyuki Kamaru, another Studio Junior animator, joins to finish the second half off. And if you've looked at the credits, it says Toei Animation, so what's the deal? Well, Toei outsourcing a lot of the animation to other studios was a very common practice, and Studio Junio was one they worked very closely with for Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball, for example, and well, they also work with for this opening. As Aguchi described, Kamaru was a junior animator at the time, although the complexity of his work filled with background animation and tricky angles makes you think he was just as experienced. Although Aguchi does note that he made corrections to his art, so no doubt, Aguchi also deserves a, a share of the praise. Although because of that, there's little to no difference between the style of the drawings. So forget that comparison. Although there is in the motion to Sonic, Aguchi leans to this fluid speed. A lot of his timing sits on ones, meaning a new drawing every frame. A lot of Kamaru's is on twos, two drawings every frame. And the spacing, the distance between each drawing is a little wide while Aguchi's is quite close packed. And finally, there's this extra bouncy energy Aguchi's work holds. Instead of just smears, a common way to loosen things up which both animators use, Aguchi also dips a little into the principle of squash and stretch. The first cut, he's stretching the shape of Sonic's hands back and forth. Seems small, but makes a difference. You can see this principle applied much more in Western cartoons than anime. Some outliers that come to my head are Toei's early works when they were trying to be the Disney of the East, and Takashi Nakamura's older work, who coincidentally was also inspired by Disney. But yeah, cool to see. And with that, thank you for watching. I also want to mention that Hisashi Aguchi was uh, admitted to hospital the other week. Uh, from the health updates he was giving on Twitter, uh, a lot now deleted things don't look good, which is why I thought it was fitting to highlight the work of this very talented animator this week and whose animation has had a big influence on me. But yeah, with that, thank you for watching. Um, and to my patrons, and I'll see you later.